Hi, today we're going to focus on projectile motion where we define free fall, we find the maximum height of projected objects, and solve two projected objects. Please make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. Question 3 Stone A is thrown vertically upwards with a speed of 10 meters per second from the edge of the roof of a 40 meter high building as shown in the diagram below. Ignore the effects of air friction. Take the ground as reference. Three point one. Define the term free fall. So free fall. That is the motion of an object where only the gravitational acceleration is acting on it. Three point two. Calculate the maximum height above the ground reached by stone A. So the stone, we know that its initial velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. And as the stone rises, it will lose momentum, meaning that the velocity will decrease in the final velocity becoming zero meters per second. So this will be the maximum height of the stone, right? with respect to the position here of the ceiling. So we want to find the height from the ground all the way up to this point here. So what you're going to do is you're going to say V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two multiplied by G multiplied by change in Y, where by the V final is zero meters per second. The initial is 10 meters per second and the G is minus 9.8 meters per second squared because the gravitational acceleration is facing downwards and then we need the change in Y. So let's substitute the values we'll get 0 squared is equal to 10 squared plus 2 into minus 9.8 multiplied by change in Y. Then you get zero is equal to a hundred minus 19.6 multiplied by change in y. Transpose the hundred, you have negative 100 is equal to negative 19.6 multiplied by change of y, change in y. Then you divide by negative 19.6. And then your change in y is 5.102 meters. So this change in y is the height of the stone or the maximum height of the stone right here, which is 5.102. But the question says it wants the maximum height above the, the ground. So meaning we need to add these 40 meters here to get the maximum height above the ground. So meaning that the ground is our reference. So we're going to have 5.102 meters plus the 40 meters giving us 45.102. Question 3.3. .3. Write down the magnitude and direction of acceleration of stone A at its maximum height. So this stone A is projected up until it reaches its maximum. So the gravitational acceleration on this stone is equal to minus 9.8 and it's facing downwards. So the answer will be G is equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the direction will be downwards.
3.4 Stone B is dropped from rest at the edge of the roof X seconds after stone A was thrown upwards Now stone A passes stone B when the two stones are 29.74 meters above the ground Calculate the value of X So this stone A here, it rises up, reaches the maximum and goes down comes back at this point and then it goes straight down here reaches this point here where it is 29.74 meters above the ground and then we have stone B here which is dropped down here and reaches this height here which is 29.74 meters above the ground so now we want to know the time difference between stone A and stone B because we are told that stone A passes stone B when they reach this point here so it means that stone A has slightly ahead of stone B at this height of 29.74 so what we're going to do is we're going to say 40 meters minus 29.74 giving us 10.26 meters so it means that the height from here is 10.26 meters so we're going to find the time between this point here and this point here in both the stone of A and the stone of B so for the stone of A using the formula change in Y is equal to V initial multiplied by T plus 1 over 2 G multiplied by T squared so the change in Y is the 10.26 meters it's going to be negative 10.26 meters because it's facing downwards equals to what's the initial velocity because the initial velocity was 10 meters per second then it went up to v final equals to 0 meters per second now it went down again the very same point meaning that at this point here the v initial is also 10 meters per second so we're going to write 10 here multiplied by t plus 1 over 2 minus 9.8 multiply by t squared then you're going to transpose the 10 point the minus 10.26 when I have minus 4.9 t squared plus 10 t plus 10.26 equals to zero then you're going to use the quadratic formula which is minus b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a whereby t is minus into 10 plus or minus 10 squared minus 4 into what is our a minus 4.9 and our c is 10.26 all over 2 into minus 4.9 so t is equals to minus 0 0.75 or t is equals to 2.79 so because time must be positive therefore t is equals to 2.79 so for stone b you want to say the change in y is equals to v initial multiplied by t plus 1 over 2 g t squared so the change in y is the same because we're going to start here it is v initial to its v final here so the change in y which means the height from this point here up until here still the same as this one so it's minus 10.26 is equals to the v initial the stone has dropped so its initial velocity is zero it's gonna be zero 
plus 1 over 2 multiplied by mi minus 9.8 multiplied by t squared. So you have minus 10.26 is equal to minus 4.9 t squared. And then when you divide by minus 4.9, t squared is equal to 2.0. 939 and then when you put the square root t is equals to 1.447 seconds so now to find the time difference between stone a and stone b we're going to say the time of stone a minus the time of stone b which the time time of stone a is 2.79 minus 1.4 447 giving us 1.343